This is Sparta! Hey guys, hope you are going well. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but Adele, it's not even halfway through the year yet. Don't you think it's a little bit premature to be sharing your favorite movies of the year? And to you I say, no. No, it's never too early to share with you the movies that I have been loving and that I just want to talk about. So today I want to share with you a few of the movies from 2018 that I have been loving so far and that are so far my favorite movies of the year. But do not worry because I will be definitely adding to this list as we move further along. So consider this part one of several. You should know there are going to be no Marvel movies on this list because by this point just assume that I love Marvel movies and they're always on my list. So it's not even interesting at this point to add them in. Okay, let's go. Let's start with the most surprising movie of the year so far with the hilarious comedy Game Night. Jason Bateman, Rachel McAdams as a married couple who kick ass at games charades, Pictionary, board games, you name it, they're awesome at games. They are super cute, competitive, and when Kyle Chandler steps onto the scene, the bar is raised with a game that is a scavenger hunt, part murder, mystery, solve the clues type of game, only it's not a game. It's real life, but they don't know it. If you were pitching me this idea, I would probably roll my eyes, honestly. It doesn't have any kind of wow factor, but wow. This movie is fun. It's all about the great chemistry between these actors. The comedic timing is flawless. It's fun and it's funny. I was laughing so much in my cinema screening that I had to literally look around and make sure I wasn't disturbing people with how much I was laughing. True story. This is the funniest movie I've seen all year and I just am so surprised by it because I did not see it coming. Next up, it is the controversially released sci-fi from Ex Machina director Alex Garland. And I say controversially released because in many parts of the world, it skipped its scheduled theatrical release and went straight to Netflix, which disappointed a lot of fans who were hoping to see it on the big screen. But honestly, it was probably a good move for this film, a more intellectual science fiction. And we know that they don't have the best track record of making bank at the box office. So yes, I didn't get to see it in cinemas in my area and I saw it on Netflix, but um, it didn't take anything away from it. Wow. Natalie Portman stars in this one as a scientist who is part of an all-female expedition heading into the Shimmer. And the Shimmer is this dome type alien entity that is expanding on the land and sort of swallowing up the land as it moves outwards. So she goes into the Shimmer in the hopes of tracking down her husband and team who went in ahead of them and are missing. This is a very eerie and unsettling type of movie, very much about the psychology of people and the decisions and choices that we make. Natalie Portman was brilliant in this, some very scary and chill to the bone type of moments and an ending that left probably half of viewers scratching their heads and running to the internet to research what the hell just happened. Annihilation is very much worth a watch if you were okay with more intellectual based sci-fi's movies that don't hold your hand and throw out a lot of big questions without necessarily giving you any answers. Now we're gonna flirt with the horror genre a little bit here, although I wouldn't call it straight horror. It's more a thriller with a pinch of horror. And this one is directed by and starring John Krasinski it's a quiet place. In a future where the world has been overrun with these hideous creatures that will find and kill you if they can hear you, this family have to not make a sound in order to survive. I actually did a full movie review on this one, no spoilers, so if you are interested, go and check out my review of it. This is a great example of what could have been a huge story, which is essentially an alien invasion, and just pairing it back to focus on one single family. Keeping it simple, super effective. For a horror thriller monster movie, this was done really well. Plenty of jump scares and a scene with Emily Blunt in the bathtub that is still haunting me to this very day. Just go see it for Emily Blunt's performance alone. She is magnificent in this. I really loved this movie. And the final movie, which is currently sitting in the number one spot of my favorite movie of the year so far, this is the one where when I'm hearing people talk about it, they start off by saying, I'm not usually a Wes Anderson fan, but man, I really liked 
I love dogs. Well, let me tell you, I am a true diehard Wes Anderson fan and I freaking adored Isle of Dogs. This movie was so, so great. It's so stylistic, so Wes Anderson distinct, everything from those beautiful, perfectly symmetrical wide shots to that throwaway sarcasm that he is so good at. So the movie is set in Japan where all the dogs have been rounded up and banished to trash island and a little boy goes to the island in search of his missing best friend his dog spot it has a very complicated plot and there is a lot to follow and many many characters i actually saw this one at a family day screening and i was surprised at the amount of parents that had brought along their small children to see this movie because i would not say it is a family friendly movie and that's not because of the subject matter although that is quite bleak and dry and dense, but it's just because there is so much to follow story-wise. I Love Dogs has charisma, has intrigue, and has such precise filmmaking craft. The stop motion, it's all stop motion. Like the level of skill involved and the way that it looks is just absolutely stunning. This is a wonderful addition to Wes Anderson's canon of work. Guys, if you love movies, I hope you've had a chance to check out some of my recommendations for my favorite movies of the year so far. But like I said, we're not even halfway through the year yet, so don't worry. There are so many more great movies that we've got scheduled for our summer release and for the rest of the year. So I am so excited to keep watching all the movies. I just really like movies, okay? That is it from me, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Don't forget, you can also comment down below let me know the movies you've been loving and maybe there's some that I haven't had a chance to see yet so I'd love to hear your recommendations back to me do as well subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and keep up to date with all things movies and TV you can as well click the little bell icon so you can stay notified every time that I post a new video sometimes those notifications don't come through even if you're subscribed to the channel here so you really need to click the bell notification icon. Uh, that is it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.